Hi, my name is Judy DeMeo, and I was about 14 when I started smoking. My mother was a smoker, and I thought it was very glamorous and made me, you know, would make me feel older and more mature and a part of the in crowd. Permit me, Duchess. Thank you, Poopsie. What is she smoking? The Duchess? Yes, what is it? Galaxy. My mother would have her coffee and she'd take a sip and then she'd do a puff on her cigarette and the smoke would just filter through the air and that was so, so glamorous. And I wanted so much to be like her. Uh, I was finally able to quit when my sister had a stroke. She quit cold turkey and she really suffered through it. Um, it made me realize, you know, that how dangerous this really was. I finally was able to do more than just give it lip service. I was able to finally say, it is my time to quit. Uh, the hotline helped me. Uh, they gave me encouragement. They gave me support. One of the biggest things for me that they said was the fact that you can do it and it can be done. And while I was sitting there, you know, daydreaming of having a cigarette, um, they would put it into a perspective that I could cope with it and I could do it. The education they gave me about uh, smoking was very important. You know, while I may have smoked all these years, I never get educated of the dangers of smoking, what it can do to you and to your lungs, to, to every part of your body. The support was done in a loving, kind, gentle way. And it, it really, really was. I, you know, they didn't, oh, are you gonna smoke today? Type thing, it really was, yes, I understand. I've been there, I've done that, you know, but you can do it. And that was the part that just, you know, made me hold on to them. I looked forward to talking to them. You know, I would write down when we were gonna speak again and stuff like that. And that gave me like a time period, which I could hold on to. You know, I could do this for however long, you know. Smoking, I mean, last thing you do at night is put out a cigarette and, and brush your teeth. And it's not the nicest way to go to bed. And first thing in the morning, within several minutes, you're lighting up a cigarette. You could smoke, you know, basically at work, convenience stores, wherever, you know. We used to light up walking to school. Of course, society looked at it differently. I mean, we were smoking inside the school building and we were ninth graders. Uh, the janitors didn't say anything. None of the other adults said anything. Well, if you like your pleasure big, smoke for real. Smoke Chesterfield, the king that has everything. Please. I quit in 92 for, for reasons. I had a young son at the time. He was three years old. Uh, I picked up cigarettes about a year and a half ago, just one day, and that pack lasted me. I think I actually threw it out after the second day. But then that weekend, I went out and bought another pack and just kind of snowballed back into daily smoking at that time. I saw an ad for the quit line and they tailored it just for me. That was what impressed me the most. They spent 45 minutes on the phone asking what my triggers were of smoking, asking where I was at now. How are you going to handle that when you quit? Uh, you know, do you smoke you know, at work on break? How are you going to handle that when you quit? They went through uh, all kinds of scenarios for me to help visualize what I'd have to go through. The, the quit line helped put it all together for me as far as putting together a good plan on how I should proceed. Uh, since I quit within uh, three weeks or so, I bought a bike. There's a great park in Nashua called Mine Falls Park with miles and miles of trails that you can run or walk or push a baby stroller or ride a bike. And I've actually lost about, about uh, 12 pounds since I quit because now I'm able to be active. It's a great thing. Public Health in New Hampshire, 
improving health, preventing disease, and reducing costs for all.